Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Mills. And if you are new here, a lot of my channel is actually dedicated to helping people with eczema heal naturally. So if you have eczema, go check those videos out after this video. But if you're new here, come along on this journey. I think in 2021, I'm gonna be posting a lot more variety of videos. So if you guys are ready, I wanted to put together a list of 20 habit changes I've made in 2020 that you can implement in 2021 to change your life. The first thing that I have on my list is slowing down. So I come from a family that is very, very fast paced. My parents are always go, go, go. And thus I was always go, go, go. And my boyfriend actually taught me that there is so much value in slowing down and taking your time. I tend to be very spontaneous. I could just decide to do something out of thin air and go do it, or I make my decisions very quickly. And my boyfriend has taught me so much about slowing down, taking my time, and thinking through processes. Thinking through what will happen from beginning to end, and this has completely changed my life this year. I have been able to make better decisions than I've made my entire life. The second habit change from 2020 is actually stretching before bed. A lot of my muscles can get super tight and tense from the stress of the day, and so before bed, I make sure to stretch out all my muscles, usually do like a little floor routine and stretch all of my muscles out. That way, I'm a lot less restless while I'm sleeping. The third habit and the second thing that my boyfriend has taught me this year is listening. It kind of goes hand in hand with slowing down. So listening is so important. You have to let the other person get their thought across because actually when you wait, they may actually say something that you didn't think that they were going to say. It takes a lot, so I actually have ADHD and a lot of this video is going to be about my experience with ADHD. And so it's very difficult for me in particular to not blurt things out. My cats are playing behind the camera. I actually just posted a video not too long ago about the 10, like 10 things about ragdoll cats before you buy them. Yes, well they're having a little jungle gym behind the camera. Um, but listening to people is so key because they're actually gonna tell you things that you would never know are as important as you would think. If you have ADHD, it would be really good for you to keep a notepad on you or open the notes in your phone, jot down what you're thinking and continue listening. And I know we get those crazy nagging thoughts, but it's actually so much more important than you would ever think to listen, especially to people who care about you. Slow down and give them space. It's also a really respectful thing to do. The fourth habit that I've implemented this year is trying to do grounding or earthing as often as possible, which basically means you're putting your feet on the earth. I actually have dealt with so much stress this year and that one thing has helped me tremendously with stress, as strange as that seems. It goes along with a lot of the others on this list related to nature, but getting my feet into the soil, getting my hands in nature, there's something about it that truly energizes you and makes you feel better. Number five is taking daily walks. So every day I try to go out and take a walk, whether it's just two minutes or whether it's an hour. This morning I walked like two and a half miles. Saturday I walked seven miles, which felt incredible. I feel like it makes me sleep so much more soundly when my body is actually physically tired, which can be hard when you work from home and you're sitting at a desk all day long. So number six is one of the most important things I've changed in 2020. I started taking personality tests to get to know myself better. And you would never know how many connections you can make to why you are feeling unhappy, why you're feeling stressed out, why you feel overwhelmed, when you don't know yourself well enough. So getting to know yourself and taking personality tests like Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, the Strength Finder test, all of these different things, even your birth chart can give you a lot of information about who you are. So this year I actually learned from my birth chart, which is reflected in my Enneagram and my Myers-Briggs, that I'm a very strange combination 
of being quite unemotional and very ambitious and being very empathetic and very emotional. So if you're into zodiac signs at all, my birth chart is a Taurus sun, a Capricorn moon, and a Cancer rising. So my Cancer rising makes me emotional and sensitive. My Taurus is still pretty emotional, but the Capricorn's pretty unemotional and, um, and very ambitious. So my Enneagram is actually a nine wing eight, which basically means that I care so much for other people. I don't like conflict. I don't like people not getting along. And at the same time, I'm a leader. I'm take charge. Uh, so it's very interesting. And I've actually learned there's a lot of pet peeves to your Enneagram that get reflected into your job. And if you learn those things, you can make your work environment so much better with your coworkers by verbally expressing these sorts of things. Number eight is listening to affirmations every single morning. So I go to Spotify. I actually created my own playlist. My personal favorite person is Ray Lewis. And I listen to three of his affirmation recordings for like an hour every morning because when you're in the world, it's so easy to hear negative thoughts, negative energy, negative news. And so when you you get all of those words into your subconscious, you start thinking that way. So for example, like, I am strong, I am perfect, I am brave, I can achieve anything. Uh, those things are really important to get into your subconscious so that you start making conscious decisions based on those subconscious thoughts. Number nine is actually pretty similar. I have changed from being in a lack mindset to an abundant mindset. There's this really excellent quote that I actually want to read to you guys. So this quote is by Idris Elba. The problem with a lot of people is that if they get rejected by a job they want or a person they like, their self-confidence becomes shattered instantly because they don't have an abundant mindset. You see, when you have an abundance mindset and you get rejected, it's okay because you tell yourself tomorrow I will find 10 other jobs or meet 10 new people. You always have possibility. Uh, actually, today, the same day I'm recording this video, I got laid off from my job and the only feelings that I have are a little bit of aggravation towards the company um, from the lack of communication about it. But as far as my me being scared that I won't find another job hasn't even crossed my mind. I'm fine. I'm, I'm healthy, I'm doing okay, I'm fine. I can get another job in an instant. I've already applied to 20 others on LinkedIn. We have made it to number 10. And number 10 is diving deep into your actions. If you're doing something that doesn't align with who you are, dive deep into what's going on. So for example, this year, I've had these really weird, stupid arguments with my boyfriend and I dove deep into it because I didn't like it. I actually realized that I have an anxious attachment style, which means the way that I interact with my boyfriend and friends and family is through a lot of anxiety about rejection. And now, knowing that, I can move on and heal. Number 11 is eating for my body's needs. So listening to your body is something a little difficult to do, but when you get a hang of it, you need to listen to the little signs and symptoms that your body gives you. So for example, if you're feeling hormonal, actually look at your diet. See if there's anything that might be causing hormonal changes. For example, dairy. Dairy can actually raise your estrogen. If you are feeling super drowsy throughout the day, is it your thyroid? Can you eat differently to solve this? And so every day I try to eat the foods that I need to make my body feel as healthy and happy as possible. So I told you we were gonna talk about ADHD and we are. So I actually got diagnosed with adult ADHD this year and it's because it was affecting me in so many ways. It was infecting, it was affecting me in my way that I did my job. Um, and I noticed all these signs and symptoms of people with ADHD and I thought, yeah, that sounds about right for my difficulties. Long story short, I realized that for me, green tea and white tea help the dopamine in my brain. I actually went through a period of time where I felt very depressed. It's actually linked to ADHD and I needed something to balance out those hormones in my brain. So for me, my daily habit is 
drinking green tea every single morning to get the dopamine going and balance me out. My 13th habit change is loving myself the way I am. I tend to be a people pleaser. I tend to feel very guilty about other people's emotions and loving myself and accepting myself the way that I am and not changing for anybody else is absolutely a game changer for you in 2021. With that being said, number 14 is cry as needed. We need to release our emotions. I'm an empath. I absorb other people's emotions. Even if I'm watching something on TV, uh, that can even affect me. So for me, I need to cry it out. Number 15 is to avoid bad news. It's not all that healthy to have all that negative energy flowing into your ears, going into your, going into your subconscious thoughts. So take the time, balance out your bad news with good news, meaning you might want to turn off the news every once in a while. Just check up to see if there's anything cool or new and let it go. You don't need to absorb all of those emotions. Okay, number 16 is a really critical one and that's go to bed before 11. So between 11 and 2 p.m., 2 a.m., they say that you go through your REM sleep and you get your deepest, most relaxing, healing sleep. So for me personally, that falls so true. So I make sure that I'm in bed probably by like 9.30 and I am fast asleep by 11. Number 17 is to get into nature as much as possible. Just like I said about grounding and earthing, being in nature really can make you feel so much better. Do you ever have those feelings where you had just a long hike or you've gone camping or you spent the whole day on the beach and you get home and you just fall right to sleep? You just feel amazing. You get the oxygen, you get the sunlight, getting into nature and getting into pretty much where human beings need to be is such a game changer. So you need to try that out in 2021. Number 18 is putting time limits on social media. So if you have an iPhone, the latest update has actually changed so that you can look at your screen time, right? And in screen time, you can actually block off times where your phone is not gonna let you into your social media. Yes, it is easy just to ignore it, but having those boundaries there really can help you stay off of social media and develop your own thoughts. Developing your own personality, your own way of thinking. That is such an important habit. Number 19 is deciding that you want to be happy. The job that I just got laid off from was actually quite a difficult experience for me. I was not having fun. I wasn't enjoying my life. I was dreading so much. I, I was physically upset a lot of the time because of this job. And during that job, I actually decided that I'm not gonna let a job dictate my happiness. I'm gonna enjoy my life, doing any small thing I can to actually have a nice time. So if I'm in a meeting, get yourself like a nice pen, a nice notebook, if you're on TikTok, they, something floating around has been like, become the main character of your life. Like live as though you're watching a movie. Enjoy your freaking life. You only have one. And if you're dreading your job, if you're dreading your everyday life, you can decide mentally that you're going to be happy. Number 20 and the last one on my list is something that has been so difficult but so beneficial and it is self Self-soothing, realizing that other people's emotions are not my fault. Other people's emotions are their responsibility and my emotions are my responsibility. That is some deep stuff to get into with yourself, especially if your past has ever told you otherwise, if the way you grew up has told you otherwise. Uh, Self-soothing is so difficult, but it is so empowering and take so much pressure off of your relationships. It is your responsibility for your own emotions. So that is the end of this video. And if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up because this is like one of the only ones on my channel like this. And if I see you guys like it, I will absolutely continue making videos like this. I wish you the best of luck in 2021. And in the comments down below, please tell me the habit you are definitely going to change. 
All right, guys, I will see you in my next video.